Hello, everybody. We are a couple of scrolls. We're not really humans, but please don't tell anyone. <laughs> Am I looking a bit greenish? <laughs> <laughs> We've taken the form of two people from YouTube because we figured that's what humans interact with the most. So that's right. <laughs> it made the most sense. <laughs> Welcome to Digital Charcuterie. I'm Andrew Fantasia, and I am joined once again by our favorite special guest, the Meeple Monkey. Hello, sir. Hey, guys. Welcome, welcome. Good day, folks. And um, yeah, yeah, very, very excited to, to be here. Yeah, yeah like um, we're, we've got some, uh, hopefully, some interesting uh, and useful uh, info for you today as well, which is uh, pretty good. So um, yeah, we're um, I guess we're sort of diving back into the uh, the the world of homebrew, I guess, and uh, maybe giving you guys some sort of uh, tips on. Um, how to, how to do it yourself, how to approach it, and, and just how easy it is to sort of um, start the process. Yeah, so looking forward to it. Yeah, it's going to be a live character homebrew. Kind of yeah. Thing. So that should be interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm, I was going to say, I'm, I'm quite excited to see which characters you've uh, you've chosen to, um, to, to put into this too. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, excited. that's the fun part. Because um, I wasn't sure what the most ideal kind of characters to do for this was. So what I did mm. was I kind of created in in very sort of true to form fashion here. I created a charcuterie board of some characters here. Oh, nice. Uh, <laughs> that we can kind of choose from. Um, these are all characters that are going to be in my uh, hypothetical season four of Marvel United, which is the big video that I'll be working on next. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These are all people that I really want to see that I <laughs> pushed into one big season. And for today's um, homebrew ideas, what I did was I took a few hero characters, a few villain characters, and a couple of anti-heroes. Uh, and I just, just so I had options, and then we'll pick like one or two that'll be the best ones to, to kind of go through and, and uh, make live here. Yeah, yeah. OK. Uh, so, um, tell you what, I will give you the sort of categories we worked with here, and then I'll okay. let you pick which one you want to uh, kind of work yeah, on yeah. there. Okay, right. cool, cool, cool. Yep. What would be easiest to start with, in your opinion? Somebody villainous or somebody heroic? Uh, I reckon heroic, because um, I, I, I hadn't counted on, on uh, villains, but I've got, I do have, because um, the villains... Uh, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to really stretch our uh, Excel uh, capabilities because it requires like multiple <laughs> what do you call it? multiple tabs. Or but I, I've I've already got some templates for that if if we need to to dive into it. So we 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 could we could play around with some villains too. But I reckon let's let's start with the heroes because it's good call. easier. <laughs> and my Excel capabilities are not that capable to do yeah. it. So that is a good call. <laughs> All right. So I have here. Who am I gonna go? Let's go with this person. So this is somebody who has been requested a lot in the Marvel United forums uh, on the okay. actual uh, campaign stuff. This is a character that I myself wasn't super familiar with until very recently, but okay. man, were they popular in those forums. So <laughs> I definitely wanted to throw them into my season four. Uh, and so let's see if we can make armor. Oh yeah, yeah, because people want to see that model, right? People want to yeah. see how they use the um what's his name? Nemesis. Um they they did that model with the, the see through helmet. That's and right. They yeah. were like, oh look, we can do it now, we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Although it, correct me if I'm wrong, but armor right, she's like completely encased in this like force field armor bubble or something that she's in, right? Yeah. So okay, they they could make the model, but how like okay, the model how would you have that sort of separately attached to the base? Maybe you have like the, the back part attached to the base and then the front pops off or something and you can get the model out or something. I'd, yeah. Maybe. Sure that would that, be a really tricky one. I'm sure they could uh, they, they could probably work it out, but uh, I think that would be a bit harder than just armors like pop on, pop off uh, yeah. thing there. Yeah. But, yeah, that's yeah, sounds, sounds very cool. Now, I don't know um, much about – from my description of her, she's got some force field bubble armor thing, right? <laughs> um, but uh, I'm so if if you've got a little bit more knowledge, if you've done the research and you know sort of roughly what what her abilities uh, are like, uh, I reckon we're good to go. Yeah. So um, yeah. So the the concept today is um, what I'd like to go to take you guys through is is my process with the the heroes um, 
when uh, what I do is basically I, I uh, pop my ideas into a, a Excel sheet, um, and that just helps me sort of visualize and make sure that I'm sort of plotting out and, and planning out the right number of um, uh, actions for the hero and try and look at, you know, and I can get a good sort of visual sense of um, are they sort of how balanced they are with their actions and, and, and what sort of um, play style they're going to lean into with, with those number of actions and, and things like that as well. So, um, yeah, so, well, yeah, when you're ready, Andrew, if you, if you want to um, throw up a, a, a blank Excel sheet and we'll All right. get started. Okay. okay, so right, now we good. are blank here. Let me get that here so I can nice, actually nice, type. Nice, nice, Okay. Uh, so where you've got character there, I guess you could you could pop in like armor uh, next to the the character tagline there. And um, all right, do you want me to do it below or or beside? Let's let's do it beside. Let's do it beside. Okay. I'm sure people who actually use Excel um, expertly will disagree with some of <laughs> how I lay this out. But I'm sure it's fine as long as I don't have to put any formulas in. I'm I'm good. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, now then if we go down uh if you go underneath uh where you've got character and let's make a little uh a heading there uh and let's call that um let's call that number 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 and then on the next screen on the next sorry next to number there um let's put a title that says uh title let's let's call it title uh -huh. right. And then the next one across from that, let's call that um, uh, actions. Uh -huh. And then uh, the one across from that, we'll call that abilities. You could call it special ability, I guess, but abilities. Okay. And then let's go back to that first column A. And underneath number, let's just go down the, the line now. And we'll just do one, two, all the way to 12. So one to 12. Gotcha. I hope I remember how to count that high. Let's see. Yeah. Whoops. See, I'm already messing up. Oh, 56 right. is not part of the yeah, equation. Yeah, high pressure. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> I hope people don't look up um, this video for like Excel tutorials. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's like, God, I really have to learn this for work. Okay. So, um, so essentially what that does is that gives you your spread of cards. So each hero deck, um, unless they throw us a curveball with this uh, season three stuff, but each uh, hero deck generally has ten cards plus um, the the two wild. So you got the single wild and the double wild, right? So generally twelve cards uh, per deck, um, and so this just lets me sort of like pop them all in nice and easily. So um, and that column, this next column that we're in now with title, we don't really need to worry about this one for the meantime. But it's essentially going to give us the names of the special abilities. Um, gotcha. And, you know, there's so lots of different ways you could lay this out. This is just the way that my brain sort of like uh, works it out sort of thing. Um, so if we go across to the actions column, but stay down on the on the 12 level. Um, okay. so I'm just going to zoom in on this yeah, a oh, little yeah. bit here. Right. There oh, I go. like it. Oh, yeah. look at that. Oh, now right. we're doing this like pros. This is good. <laughs> All right. So um, now with this. Uh, this is where I just put in what the what the actions are. So for that bottom one, we know this is going to be wilds. Um, so what I generally do is I just write wild comma space wild, um, and to save some room, I usually just do wld wld sort of thing. So okay, uh, wild 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 wild. So we know that's going to be the the uh, the twelfth card, and we know that uh, number eleven is going to be just a single wild, um, and then whoop. Excel is assuming lots of things yeah. <laughs> all right okay wow i mean this could be armor's like special ability maybe she has two one yeah <laughs> two Let me just do that. yeah there yeah nice, right. nice okay um then what i like to do after that is i mean if i've got some really strong ideas about um what sort of action type you know she is this more of a heroic character or more of a um you know, uh, attacky sort of character or whatever it might be. I'll, I, you know, I might start popping in some actions here, but at this stage, I like to then go back to the abilities. And generally, the the precedent seems to be, at least from the first season, um, each character has about three abilities. 
Okay. Um, yeah. And when they threw in the um, the mutants in the last season, um, that sort of stretched out to about four abilities. Sometimes there's like a as long as this card is in an effect uh, type thing, and that's often a, a starting hand card as well. Um, but then we've also seen other characters where, um, you know, like Professor X, I think has a whole bunch. And then there's, there's some characters that have like, you know, their whole deck is, is special abilities and that sort of thing. So you can feel, uh, you know, you basically can do whatever you want at this point. Right. But, um, what I like to start with at least is maybe just sort of picking, um, three, uh, or four abilities and sort of, you know, doing so card number one, two, three, and four, or one, two, and three are going to be special abilities. And then we just start filling in the the actions and stuff there. So um, if we think about armor now, correct me if I'm wrong, this is sort of something that she kind of like can sustain for a long time, right? This big armored form sort of thing. Yeah, she almost uh, kind of uses it as uh, like a, a giant mech in a way. Mm -hmm. She's, it seems like she can walk around in it I'm sure yeah. it shatters under some kind of pressure, um, yeah. but it's it's there to be mobile, which yeah. is kind yeah. of neat. Okay, so we can probably then give her, say, a start, like we'd probably want to give her like a starting ability or starting hand type card that's yeah. some sort of like, um, you know, as long as this card is in effect. And at this stage, again, you don't have to get the wording perfect and that sort of stuff, but it's just, you know, uh, basically in that in that abilities line at the, on the, the the top one there for number one i'd be writing something like as long as this card is in effect and then you just describe what, what you want it to do so it could be um you know you ignore the first hit every turn or you whatever it might be however you want to um articulate that that this is some sort of protective mech thing that she's walking around in so i'll leave that up to you um your your character sort of thing but um yeah, how would how would you see this armor uh, working? I think that's the best way to do it. As long as uh, this is face up, once mm -hmm. per turn, you can kind of soak up a damage. And I think because she's mm -hmm. so massive, she could yep. maybe even soak up damage from other heroes in her location. Yeah, yep, yep. There you go. So I, that's what I, I'd, I'd pop it in. Then you can always, you know, uh, through play testing, you can always come back and tweak it. But yeah, perfect. So. All right. Now I'm trying to remember how to do that Excel thing where you make. Uh, you make this big enough to fit all of that text. <laughs> oh, oh, I just I just type it in and and oh, you know what? What about uh, if you drag the um, you know, where the D is up there? Uh, oh, I think and you're then right. you just drag that across. Yes, that's right. That's what right, I do. Sir. I just sort of yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That's it. That's much better. All right. So as long as this card is face up in the storyline. Mm -hmm. Armor may actually they kind of uh, once per villain turn. I think that's kind of mm -hmm. how they like to word it. Yep. Armor may uh, ignore one damage dealt to herself or to another hero mm -hmm. in her location. Excellent. And then what you can do as well. Um, because like a lot of the guys in the homebrew community and myself included, like we like to, um, you know, try and stick to the wording as much as possible in the, you know, from what they've already used and that sort of thing as well. But sometimes, you know, to like to fit it all into on, you know, with, <laughs> within the boxes on the cards, sometimes it's okay just to sort of like, you know, cut and trim it as long as you can get the, the meeting across and that sort of thing. And it's, that's yeah. Fine. So, yeah. 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 Cool. So um, excellent. So we've got, so that's her sort of main, that's the crux like that. We've got her, main ability that's going to give her her thematic sort of feel there as well i think that's a pretty good one now in terms of let's let's just say we were going to make her <clears throat> um, let's see she is she is a mutant isn't she so i guess technically we should probably try and give her three abilities but um <clears throat> with these we can sort of double up on them you know like so you know you don't have to think of three separate abilities you could sort of think of one you know, attack type thing that she might do or something and give, you know, just repeat that a couple of times or whatever it might be. But um, so can you think of any anything from the from her character or the stories or anything that you've seen? Um, maybe either like an offensive capability or some sort of utility sort of thing where like she does she draw other people? I suppose that I suppose we've covered that, like maybe she can even include other people inside her 
I'm just making stuff up now. I don't know if she ever does this, you know. (laughs) Can can she like wrap other people up inside her? You know what? (laughs) That's a good question. I don't know if I've ever seen her do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we, we better not make make uh, too many assumptions. I'm like, yeah, it is. It's like she never does that. <laughs> but but um, she, yeah, could, like, uh, she could definitely do a thing where um, maybe there's a special card with, like, let's say, two heroic actions on it, mm-hmm. and the ability on the card is um, for every civilian you rescue this turn, rescue an additional civilian. Cause I feel like she can really get in the way of stuff. So if there's okay. like civilians in danger, she can be like, Nope. And just keep a whole bunch of them safe. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so let's work. So what was it um, f- for, for each civilian? Uh, and usually I just write like civ for civilian. Cause right. it, it's, it's usually um, like you replace the word civilian with that little picture of the, thing yeah. and Civ just sort of like is like a key thing in my brain to remind me to put the symbol in rather than the, the word so for each uh Civ you rescue this turn yes. um you, you may, may rescue one additional Civ excellent All there right. you go and uh, that would be two stars I think mm-hmm. So how do you usually denote those? Now, star, stars, I usually do here. Uh, even though in my head, I always, I always, and even on the videos, I always say stars. Um, I, you could do it either way. You can write stars or you can write heroic. And, and for heroic, I would just do H-R-O, just as the abbreviation All for right. that. Let's, either let's way. Let's try this to H-R-O. Mm-hmm. And you know what? If I remember from my other one that I do, can I do a thing here? Just to punch it up a bit. There we go. Oh, yellow, yellow nice. for heroic. Color code them. Yeah. All right. Well, now you got to do rainbow though for for the wilds down the. Oh, that's right. Ah, <laughs> oh, too bad. Is that Excel, an option? <laughs> Excel's options are so limited. Wow. There's not a whole lot unless there's a new cell style, but I would have to make one. I'll see. That we can figure good. that out. All right. <laughs> okay, so that's cool. Um, and then, um. Now, so for that one, for that ability, if you wanted her to sort of lean into this being like her big thing, you could make that an additional, like you could do that again, just basically just sort of copy and paste that. So card two and three both have the same um, ability sort of thing. I see. Um, and if you wanted to, you could, um, if you wanted to play around with the expectations, like you could make uh, this one like a move and heroic um, so that um she this one sort of uh is, is more about like you can get to where they need to be protected and then you've still got a little bit of heroics there and, and then com- uh depending on what else you've you've played from your the previous hero's turn um that can also give you some more heroics as well sort of thing but yeah up, up to you actually you could just make this a straight copy or you could play around with the symbols as well i like that it throws in some variety uh so let's do that one move to her oh my color-coded <laughs> ideas are oh, no. out the window now. <laughs> well, you, well you know what actually um uh I'll, well, well let's do a quick aside here because i, I want to okay this is probably all right so sorry to interrupt the flow here but um uh from our last video i did um remember we talked about uh the dynasty warriors being one of the the crew that i'd like to do yeah. so i've actually i actually sort of in, in the meantime i actually went went ahead and designed like three of the the heroes from that and got them professionally printed too i don't know if i'm holding Ooh. this up to the right screen here but you can see here this is uh zhang fei Oops, oh wow yeah okay so what i did with these guys is i actually just used the same image for this particular set um i just used the same image for each each one but i've changed the color of the background um, just to sort of create some variety and the way i did that was i just sort of like tied it to their action so i sort of did red uh red for the attack ones i did purple <laughs> for the the wilds um those yellowy are... sort of one for the stars oh, and stuff i'm gonna i'm gonna minimize this excel because those are way too nice to show oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's, let's see that again <laughs> yeah, yeah so look at that probably should take him out of the sleeves but um <laughs> but you can see here that so i had a bit of a system of which which color overrode which thing so like if it was stars 
if there was any stars on it, basically it was going to be a yellow background. So you could use, the whole reason I'm showing this is you could use this, <laughs> something like this where you could just go, oh, okay, well, if it's if it's got some stars in it, we'll do stars as the color coding sort of thing for it. Right. But, um, uh, and I sort of did the same with the move. So movement always gets overridden by whatever you're doing after the movement sort of thing. So that was like a red one for the, uh, oh, that's for, great. The, for the attack one sort of thing. So yeah, they, they, but this is essentially what, once you done, once, once you've done what you've done, um, with the Excel sheet and once you get, um, some templates like this, pretty much this is, this is the next step. It's, uh, yeah, nice and easy sort of thing. So, yeah, so we're, we're, we're on the way, you know, so. Yeah. <laughs> Those look great, play. man. Yeah. yeah. So, and it was, um, I, yeah, it was, um, I think it was make, make playing cards was the, the outfit that I used. Um, I think they're based in the States and, um, they have quite an easy system where you can just pop your files in and you can see them all visually so you can make sure you get it all lined up and you know that you've got the right backs and fronts and all that sort of stuff oh, as well. That's so, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All good. All right, well, let's head, let's head back into Armour. Oh, well, and... now let me open that up. Oh, by the way, we got uh, some very nice uh, comments here from Nelly Mel Gaming. Ah, oh, <laughs> Meeple Nelly. Building Characters Live. I'm so proud and a super sticker. Wow, thank you so much. Oh, nice, nice. Well, uh, you've, you've actually got... Um, uh homebrew royalty in your in your um your chat there because uh uh nelly nell he is the uh designer of um the a lot well he's, what hasn't he done but he, he's done a bunch of the one piece stuff a bunch of the original one piece stuff Ooh. um he's done uh my hero academia homebrew um he's just done you know the castlevania the netflix show uh-huh uh, he's done he's done a bunch of characters based on that he's just launching into um sentinels of the multiverse which is like a i don't know if they were originally like a comic book so, sort of thing or if um they are a board game based on a made-up comic book i don't know you know did one come before the other sort of thing but um he, he's making characters based on that as well and and um i think he might have also done naruto as well if i'm if i'm not mistaken so he's lots of great stuff and really really good stuff i'm um, i'm really eager to show off I've done done his buggy the clown villain we've done a playthrough of those um mm. and i've got a kuro one uh coming up soon captain kuro from one piece as well so lots to go on with but uh actually just before we dive into thingy uh nelly speaking of nelly nell um i've printed off his uh this is his my hero academia entrance exam deck oh, so this wow. is this is an alternate mode where you you still use a villain but the villain isn't the main point of the battle so the villain is just kind of like running around doing stuff and you're trying to get into the high school by um completing all these missions that appear in the in the mission line and you've got to basically sort of clear them i don't know if i'm holding that up right so you score point and the, the idea is to score like 100 points before the villain um achieves their mission sort of thing so um yeah i've got a whole deck of these so nelly nell they're they're, they're coming as well i'm going to be <laughs> doing a play test of these soon on the screen as well so they're but they're quite cool so it's like things like uh heroes rescue everyone so you have to um place one uh so basically when this card comes up in the storyline place one uh civilian in all locations with at least one hero and then to get rid of this uh mission from the um from like the mission market i guess um the first hero to end their turn uh with no civilians in their location scores 10 points essentially like completes that one so there a whole bunch of these sort of like cycle through and come through and that give you different little uh, mini missions to sort of complete one after the other sort of thing and you've got to sort of get them done whilst avoiding and dealing with the villain and all that sort of stuff as well so interesting um interesting alternate mode to play with sort of thing so yeah so yeah nelly nell he's he's got some he's got some good stuff going on there so so cool yeah, so yeah. happy to have you aboard nelly Mel. that's great like yeah. there's so much creativity <laughs> with all these homebrews and they're like i i spend so much time just thinking of characters i want to see that i always forget to do this kind of work and this is even yeah. more impressive like this is so cool yeah so that, that's that's the problem like as soon as you have the ability to do it then then it's no longer you're like oh what do i want to see it's like oh like how much time have i got to make all of this <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah yeah all right so, so where were we so we were so we had the so two copies of that yes let me uh copy paste let me see if i can remember how to copy paste on excel <laughs> let's see copy is this gonna work am i gonna be able to work uh, hey oh, I, got I our first try yeah I had, I, <laughs> thank you yeah he's got this he's got this all right <laughs> so for that take one, a page out of your book and yeah there you go 
make that yellow. Yep, yep. So um, maybe for the last one, um, you could even just do some sort of simple smash thing where she just like like does like uh, the special ability thing is like a double punch or something like that. Or um, but I, I don't know, like what? Yeah. yeah. Can you remember any instances where she's like done anything of offensive? Like I'm. Because she's so sort of after my time as, yeah. a, as an X-Men guy, uh, it's hard to say, but I know I have seen, <laughs> this is literally the, the lamest thing to base this off of, but I have seen an image of her on Google where she's literally just going like that. And yeah, punching, yeah. Punching down on somebody. So I think Smash <coughs> is a great, uh, great choice for that. I just uh, want to change our backdrop mm -hmm. to something a little more Marvel United looking. Let's see. There we oh, go. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, Smash will be, and we can actually name that. Um, go Smash. Yep. Smash. Okay. Um, and then, so, in, so you, you might want to think about, okay, so if we're going to, if we're going to say that the, the ability box is basically just going to be two, two punches. What do we want to give that? Do we want to give her, say, like this one, like a single movement so she can get to where she needs to go to do the two punches? Or do we want to make this like a, a heroic because she punches to defend someone? Or, you know. Um... Hmm. How about. Okay, this, this seems like it would be thematic, but again, it's thematic only based off of that image I saw. So I yeah, could no, be completely wrong. Yeah. <laughs> if, if anybody watching this is a hardcore armor fan, I am yeah. so sorry. Uh, feel, feel free to send send your feedback. You know, we, we can make adjustments. That's the whole point, right? Yeah. This would be like somebody who's never heard of X-Men who's like, I bet you Wolverine just has a lot of animals that he yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but let's say because she's so big, mm -hmm. what if we make this, uh, the card is the basic action that you share along the timeline is one movement. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's say one move. Yeah. But the special ability is double punch in an adjacent location. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. So she reaches out and like clobbers someone. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. Let's so it. let's see. Uh, two attacks in an adjacent location. There we go. Excellent, excellent. And the way that would, I guess, um, I mean, there's different ways you could do it, but like it could just be like two punch symbols and then like in an adjacent location sort of thing. Like that's probably how you'd save space on that too. Yeah. Um, okay, excellent. Um, so you could color code that one green, I guess, for the move. Uh -huh. All right. And then... So now we're looking at it, and so now we start to. So we've we've done our special abilities. I guess we want to have a think about: Do you want that card that you would often play at the beginning of your your game, sort of thing, when you've got her in your starting hand? Do you want her to have an action for that ability? Because um, right. often the abilities have um, often the abilities only have one action um but sometimes with these starting hand ones sometimes they don't or whatever but um uh yeah like what, what are you what are you thinking um so as long as this card is face up in the storyline what's for so we could give her a i don't know um maybe as a trade-off because it is a, a pretty powerful ability it could be mm. like one of those ones like uh, phantom x for example where he's got a couple yeah. starting hand ones but they're blank but they're really yeah. good. They like they, yeah. they just keep paying for themselves. Easy peasy, easy peasy. All right, so that's yeah. good. So that's 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 good. Now that um, so now what we look at is, and this is just like anecdotal. This is just people in the the homebrew forums where I haven't actually done the research on this to look it up and do all the calculations. But I'm reliably informed that roughly most heroes have between six, sixteen and eighteen symbols. Um, including the the wilds and the double wilds so that okay. gives you a bit of a ballpark to aim for and so I, I like to think of it as okay well if i'm trying to design a really powerful one i'll go for 18 if i'm trying to des design one that's maybe not as overtly powerful or maybe if i think their their abilities 
sort of make up for it, I'll do like a 16 <coughs> um, or most of the time I aim for 17. I just, you know, right down the middle sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and that way I don't feel like I'm, I'm you know, <laughs> making something too overpowered. <laughs> um, and again, this is all, th this isn't like an exact science sort of thing. It's like, um, that's just sort of like what um, the people in the homebrew sort of uh, have have said at some point, and and I sort of just remembered that and just have basically just followed that. <laughs> so um, you know, you can always go back and and again tweak these and double and change them and that sort of thing. But yeah, I always try and go for for about seventeen. So and usually what what that equates to is I think the um, I think I usually have about four um, of the cards with like a double a double effect, and then uh the rest as singles um but th then again like so you've you've got a couple of your special abilities here with double symbols um so i would probably be having less basic cards with double symbols now just to try and sort of make up make up those numbers sort of thing so um yeah and, and at this point you can just basically just sort of go down your five six seven eight nine ten and just sort of put whatever ones you want in there i usually sort of start with the singles and then um as I go down, I sort of add the doubles as well. So, um, right. yeah. So with her, um, so how many have we got there? We've, we've done uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that right? Yeah, we got eight. Yeah, we got eight. So yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, what do we think? Is she, I, I, I'm guessing she doesn't feel like a super move heavy character. Yeah, I think you're right. I think she'd be more slow and lumbering. Yeah. So we've got at the moment we've got one move uh, with one card. We've got, so we've got two moves. I think generally the the characters that tend to be relatively slow, what they have about maybe two or three maximum movement. Yeah, that seems about right. So you could give her a. So you could you could throw in one more movement somewhere, but um, maybe because she doesn't feel like a super move heavy character, maybe. Maybe let's not give her a single move. Let's maybe chuck a move in with one of the other symbols as a double action. Um, but again, this is all sort of, we can do this however we want. So, so one, one move, move, one attack, I think. Would one be... attack. Okay, yep, yeah. very good. So then um, what have we got? We're playing with about seven more now, are we? One, two, three, four. So that was 10, seven, yeah, so eight, seven nine, more. Ten, yeah, so seven more. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, there you go. So if we do if we do two more doubles, uh, and then we could do three singles. All right. Um, so one easy one we can get out of the way. Since she's just so mm -hmm. big and, and uh, lumbering there, we could do a mm -hmm. double attack. Double attack, yep. Plain nice. old double punch there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then... So the other one, we probably don't want to give her a, a move with this next double one. So we could either do two stars or maybe star and attack. Star attack sounds right. Star attack, yep. Yeah. Okay. And I think, how do they do that? I think they normally, what have I got in my deck here? Uh, I think they normally go attack star is the okay. official way to, if you have those two together, I think they always put the attack first. All right. Again, being homebrew, you can kind of do what you want, but you know, if you if you try and follow the the precedents, it, it sort of helps you feel more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, knowing okay. that there's uh, like knowing that thing that you mentioned about usually between sixteen and eighteen, that really helps because it really gives you a nice set of parameters to work inside of. Otherwise, you'd be kind yeah. of lost at sea. Yeah. Now, again, I have no idea if it's actually true. <laughs> like, but. Um, but it seems to it seems to work, and the the characters that I've played with that I've made I've um, uh, designed with that like they they seem to work pretty well. If they feel overpowered, it's usually because I've made their special abilities too good <laughs> rather than the actual <laughs> the number of attacks and stuff. But yeah, once you have that, like once you have because um, this spreadsheet that I'm showing you guys, like really you could lay this out however you want, right? There's, this is there, yeah. but it just it helps me with like once you know okay between sixteen and eighteen. And if you just got some some way to vi easily visualize that and just sort of see it, okay, how many more do I need and that sort of thing, that makes the whole process just super super quick sort of thing. So yeah, um, 
Yeah, so what have we, so we've got those two now. So now we're just looking for three singles. Um, we probably don't want to do any movement. So it's just a matter of, okay, how are we going to spread? Are we going to have um, more, maybe, she feels like she's maybe fairly heroic. I, I don't know, like, does she do a lot of rescuing? Like maybe go two, two stars and one attack or do yeah. we go... Two uh, two star ones and then one attack one sounds like it fits. And you know, and and it like because her special abilities kind of play around. Like mo she's got those two that play around with the the rescuing civilians and things like that. So it seems like that's what she's leaning into, sort of thing yeah. as a character. So she's kind of like a good character for taking in if you want to um, be sort of heroic, heavy, or doing a lot of that sort of stuff. But she's got a she's got a a decent amount of punching to sort of um, supplement that as well yeah so heroic and another one heroic and then one attack without that heroic getting that in the heroic. way and there you go groovy okay and that seems like a well-rounded character um it it feels like we are getting our, for lack of a better term, we're getting our money's worth, even though, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't get an action here. You get your money's worth with what she can do, not just for herself, yeah. but for other heroes. And she's doing a lot yeah. of good stuff. Doesn't mm -hmm. feel OP. Perfect. Look at that. We're done. Simon, this one's already done for you. Look, you just, wow. just you know. <laughs> You're welcome, Andrea. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> That's right. we, let's get fancy now and name these. So... Oh yes, that's right. Yep, yep. So yeah. we go into the the title. So we've got Smash already. That was a, that's that's a nice easy one. I was looking um, at what it how they describe because you know how like Stan Lee and Marvel they always had those cool ways of describing powers like the proportionate strength of a spider and all that. I was trying to yeah, look yeah. at what like what they call her armor. Okay, psionic body armor. That's what they yep. call it. Psionic. So, there, there you go. And the yeah. other the other one that's good too is to look up like their their quotes and stuff. Like, so for this one where she's like rescuing people, like if she's, if she's got quotes and stuff, you know, that are like, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, take shelter under me or what, you know, something like that, you know, th those sorts of things can yeah. be good, but, uh, so, something, but otherwise, um, um, what's this over for each? So, um, I don't know. Maybe this one, yeah, you know, uh, like just take shelter or um, or uh, <laughs> massive hug. <laughs> massive hug. Let's see. Take shelter sounds pretty good. Let me just uh, read you this one here so I can make that a little bigger. Um, take shelter. Let's see. Yeah, I think that. Or, or no, no, here. Shield from harm. That sounds... Yeah, there you go. Shield that sounds from harm. heroic. I like, it. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Shield from harm. Oh, nice. Yeah. Beautiful. There we go. So we've got... We've, we've designed a mutant. We've got the four four uh, special ability cards. Uh, we've got... How many did we... We ended up with 17, didn't we? Yeah. 17 thingies. Yep. So... Perfect. There we go. And uh, perfectly usable character now. So we've just got to pop her into the template and and uh, <laughs> we'll make her up. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't break the game in any way. It's all good. No, no. <laughs> uh, so there you go, Simon. But uh, when it comes to designing that mini, you are on your own. We cannot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, now they can spend all their time. Yeah, we, we've saved them all that time thinking about the, the rules. They can they can invest a bit more time in, in, exactly. their, yeah, in engineering the, <laughs> that model. I know yeah, if yeah. I worked there, the one thing that I would probably get too hung up on and like the people above me would probably be like, Andrew, come on, like, like stop wasting time is I get really hung up on, uh, okay, what color would the cards be and what color would the little accent yeah. of the cards be? Cause they're all always different. And that's, I love how colorful the game is. So I would always be like, every card needs to be the best yeah. it can possibly be. <laughs> yeah. That's actually, it's probably one of the most fun things when you actually are designing the, the cards, I must say, for, for me, that's probably one of the most fun things to do is like come up with the, the color combinations. Um, uh -huh. Like, so for example, um, and what I often do is I'll use the color dropper, like the color sampler or whatever in the Photoshop. Um, 
my Photoshop skills are about as good as my Excel skills. So. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I've got a very good template from um, Helios23. He's a um, another uh, home brewer. He's got this like uh, template that he shared with us, and and that's how I'm able to to sort of craft this stuff is because it's a very um, user friendly sort of system sort of thing. But uh, um, you can see here. Ooh. Oh, hold on. Let me make <laughs> yeah. nice and big for us here. Um, with these, mm -hmm. probably take the glare out there. Oh, hi, Argyle um, Smith. Thanks for joining us. Hello, hello. Um, so I'll do like a color dropper, and I'll I'll pick like a, a thing from the actual character, and so that's how I'll get my colors. So for these guys, I actually did um, because they're Dynasty Warrior characters. What I'm doing is all of the uh, shoe heroes that have the same green uh like background mm -hmm. but then these colors for the frames are all based on like different bits and pieces i've picked out from their their thingy so like this guy's got i think the brown from his hair and like gold from his yeah. from his gold trim and well, actually no i think the brown is he's got some brown on his armor there or something like that but um yeah so that's that's how i do those guys and then uh street fighter um you've got uh this is dal sim Ooh. oh cool and um so these guys are like um i think again yeah i think like so you can see the see how he's got the i don't know if you can see that my lighting's not very good in here but he's got those like stripes on his head so yeah just the color from that for that for that one there and that sort of thing as well um head, headset's coming off <laughs> um but when i did um street fighter as well sometimes i like to do like a mix of colors so like this is blue and mm. white for for e honda and that sort of thing so you can really play around with all that sort of stuff i think i don't know how how much they do the the two-tone things in um in actual marvel united i think they try and they try and stick to like you know like a a, a single sort of like color set sort of there but um yeah that, that that's that's part of the fun as well you know you get to sort of play around with that and have some fun with that so that's that's pretty good so yeah that's what yeah. makes the game look like the game in my opinion yeah how those cards are and uh the green yeah, yeah. of that dynasty warriors guy you showed that's so cool because the the marvel pantheon of heroes not a whole lot of them like to wear green no so yeah. you don't see that color too often in yeah, the cards, yeah. which is great i was yeah. uh when i was looking at the email that they sent about spider geddon and what all those cards look like i was like i'm standing there staring at them like i wonder how they could have made spider-man noir's cards just a little bit different because right now they look so much like symbiotes because it's just black and white black and oh, white oh yeah yeah so i was yeah. trying to think of ways to swap it and maybe make noir a bit more gray but mm. those are the kind of things i waste my time on so yeah. i know if, if i work for simon they'd be like andrew you're you're on the clock but yeah <laughs> yeah yeah for sure well that yeah the other thing too is like just all the little um like the dot patterns like there are different homebrewers out there that have different templates and different things and and i could it's the sort of stuff that I don't even notice until it's like pointed out to you. And then you're like, Oh yeah. Like the, like what dot patterns do they actually use on the, the, the official cards and how close are they to the ones that, that different people are using and something like, and then on the backs of the, I think the backs of the villains, they have the dot pattern, but it's actually like a, a circle. There's like a, a radiating circle sort of thing that comes out. Right. And I, I totally missed that. You know, I didn't see that sort of thing. And, um, and then like the, that sort of splotchy, coloring in the background of their cards as well it's not just like a solid color as well yeah it's yeah, got that kind all... of uh what do they call it the kirby crackle almost like the dots the comic dots yeah yeah, yeah. Going it's very very interesting so and there's different yeah different homebrewers out there with different different templates and different symbols and ways they do that sort of thing but i mean they all look all look great like they all look you know like to me this sort of like oh that's yeah that that's 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 what they look like right but yeah, yeah this, this doesn't have all the that wavy sort of different coloration sort of stuff going on in the background. It's got dots and stuff, but even then they're probably the dots aren't exactly the, the same way the dots are done and stuff, but um, yeah, but they all look awesome. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, actually, I'll, I, keep, I keep showing these things off. I'm, I'm excited to show these. This is, um, there was a guy in the, um, actually there's a couple of guys. I always forget who the other, other person was, but in um, Marvel United Discord, there was a user and he was quite polite about this the whole way through the campaign. I don't rem remember if you remember, there was a, wasn't as big a movement as um, Unleash the the Jackal, right? Right. Remember Unleash the Jackal? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I mean, the, the Jackal got unleashed a little bit, kind of like a, 
side character or something, but um, there were some other voices calling for brute force. Do you remember brute force? I remember seeing the the uh, people calling for that. Yeah. Yeah. So there was, and there's a particularly polite guy in the um, uh, Marvel United Discord uh, by the name of uh, Mateo, and he was like the champion. There was another another guy. It might have been Divided Sky or um, I forget who the other one was, but uh, calling for brute force, right? So I right. decided to to um to sort of take that and run with it and we we started work there's a few of us that i think addicted unrivaled or something there was a guy called addicted unrivaled and um and uh, milk uh milk wasowski or something like that um who we've been working together in the homebrew sort of thing and it sort of like died off a little bit we, we sort of we started strong with ideas and then we we uh we've come back but i've decided to actually get get a move on with these so i've made these uh brute force cards right and brute force do you know much about brute force literally all i know about them is what i learned from your videos oh mate brute <laughs> force. okay so brute force are these like animals that basically get brain uh brain implants put in them or they basically get captured and have these things put in that let them sort of think and talk and all that sort of stuff and then they get given these like nano suit technology suits that like let them sort of do all these sort of super fighting and stuff. And they, and they also transform into cars as well. Oh, my God. Vehicles. Um, so, and they're basically like used as like an eco, eco warrior team. They basically sort of go around championing causes of animals and, and the environment and that sort of thing. Um, but they're very, they're very sort of side, you know, they're, they're, they're only in a couple of issues of, you know, a couple of comics here and there sort of thing. They, they weren't sort of picked up and run with very much. But, um, Hence, hence why they're not in uh, Marvel United. But uh, well, they're not human actors, so they'll probably be the next Disney Plus show if the strike. Is yeah, it's, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but they're they're very cool. And uh, so there's like a bear. Like, who doesn't want a bear, a lion, an eagle, a dolphin, and a kangaroo Ooh. as your as your team? It's amazing, right? So, um, I've gone ahead and and put together some of these these cards for these guys, um, and uh i had a point to show these guys i can't remember what the point was now but um <laughs> i guess i'll just show them off but so we've got here's here's your dolphin dr echo okay so he's pretty cool um and then he transforms into where is he transforms into a race car i've subsequently got oh a better image God. of that um <laughs> it, this is kind of just him like parked outside of a like a tokyo alley or something like that but i've got a better one that makes him look like he's going a bit faster and stuff but um what i've done with these guys is uh see they've got this vehicle mode so this one is like so they've all i've given them all a vehicle mode card this is as long as this card is face up in the storyline you get to like get one free movement essentially per turn right. right so they all have something like that so the the um the kangaroo, he's got a an ATV. Oh, I love it. Terrain vehicle. It's uh, and his lets it. I've actually changed this ability. It lets him basically um, uh, use the end of turn locations, even if they're covered. So you can sort of like he gets gets around the 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 problem sort of thing. Um, but these are fun too because what you do with this is like you get your image, you cut it out and then you put it against a, another image. So this is like an explosion I've taken from another comic panel and then put the, the, the main image sort of jumping, jumping out from it. So the, you've got all, all of these different cards, the bear and the, the lion as well. And then I've created the Deadpool Voltron brute force challenge. So, so this, this is actually from like a Deadpool comic. <laughs> he finds he's he's going up against some big bad guy or something so he finds brute force and like hires them and then like forces them in to make themselves into voltron for him <laughs> <laughs> and then like when he um the, the actual panel that this one's from uh, this dolphin is actually saying like this is very painful <laughs> so but um so the idea with this is that once you get all of your um all of your vehicles down on the board so once each each hero has played their their vehicle card um you transform into voltron you replace all those models with one model in the in the latest location of whichever hero put the the vehicle down last and you basically and and what i what i use is the sentinel i use the sentinel model for the nice. <laughs> for the thingy um and then you have going forward you have all of the heroes then use the same model so you basically just take your turns as normal um but you use the, the one model and all of your heroes have 
all the ongoing abilities of the vehicles currently in one model sort of thing. So you get the free movement, you get like an extra punch, you get, you know, all that sort of stuff um, with the one big Voltron sort of model sort of thing. Um, and it, yeah, it, it seems to work. I've done a, done a bit of play testing with it and stuff, but uh, so that, that's some other fun stuff you can do with, with this stuff as well as you can start sort of playing around with that sort of stuff as well. So that needs yeah. to be a thing. That needs yeah. to be a thing. <laughs> so it's, it's getting close. So we've got all these guys are loaded up in the drive now. The only thing I haven't done is, I've got to sort of um, update this rules thing because uh, just to explain a bit more about what happens when you take damage and and that sort right. of thing as well. But um, but yeah, it's all it's all all there ready to go. And I've I've, they, I've these were just some not very good art um, for the backs. I've I've found uh, they've just released a new web comic for Brute Force like just in the last couple of days. Oh. So I was able to use that to get some, um, some better art for the the backs of them and that sort of thing as well. So oh cool yeah yeah yep yeah, yep. Yeah. Well there you go. So we've we've designed uh a live uh hero design here with uh armor that was pretty cool yeah um now i was <laughs> i must admit i wasn't wasn't super prepared for um for a villain but we can have a look at it um we could at least have, make, make a bit of a start on it okay have a look at it if you like yeah yeah all right so yeah, would it be easier if i open a new sheet or well, what I was going to say is maybe if the internet is willing to take a take a risk on me and my internet skills, it's not really internet skills. I guess it's um, technology skills. <laughs> I could try and open one of mine. Let me just before I do that, let's just make sure I can find a villain template. Maybe I'll just find one uh, of an existing one. Oh, okay uh if i can find one uh oh where's because i just did sagat you know from street fighter yeah i just did a sagat i'll see if i can find him um oh by the way this is it's very appropriate that we do this here like this because literally marvel united aside from like my pay stubs every month marvel united is the only thing i use excel for so I'll show you really quickly here. This is literally oh, yep. my my only Excel use is I have all the heroes that I own here in a list. Oh, nice. And I've uh, I've done the color stuff here is I've done like how many. So this is uh, where is it? How many punches they have, how many moves they have and how many stars they have and then how many tokens they can possibly distribute just if I ever need to know. Oh, cool. And yeah, green yeah, yeah. means you're really good at it. So, for example, Beta Ray Bill here, he's really good at punching. Uh, yeah. Yellow means you're average. Red means you're not so good. Oh, very cool. So, that but, gives you, like, so if you're trying to pick like a balanced team sort of thing, you can. Oh, I like exactly. it. Exactly. So, if I have people over, because I like to play random, so I don't care. But if I have people over, yeah, at yeah. least they have that. But mostly yeah. I like to keep track. What I do is I keep track of every time the character wins, <laughs> loses. And then oh, if, nice. if they get the kill shot on the villain, I keep track of that too. So oh, yeah. there's a guy, um, there's a guy on uh, BGG. I think he's also in the Discord as well. That he likes to champion. There, there's actually like this Google form out there that um, people have been putting all their results into. It's like it's it's this big master form where mm. people from all over can put their results in, um, and it's sort of like so it it has this big sort of tracking of all that information across the community. And since you've got all that stuff recorded already, I wonder if that would be easy enough. You could, if you, <laughs> if you wanted to spend the time, you could go and you could put all that, you could dump all that data into, into that guy's form and really um, bulk out their numbers sort of thing. That's yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, what's cool. Um, I like, you know, you can get those different, this sort of reminds me of, uh, I think it's the ones I use, a ta there's a company called Table Play um, who make really nice um, dividers that you can put in between your uh -huh. cards, like where you store them. Um, and they have that that sort of information, like, you know, how many punches, how many um, attacks, how many this and that sort of thing. So that's you can sort right. of look through it. And yeah, that's it's really handy having something like that. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> it's funny, you know, you have people come over and it's like, hey, let's play this nice, simple game. <laughs> just hold on while I open up my spreadsheet. So yeah. I can tell you which. <laughs> let me get my graphing calculator out and I'll let you know what the best pick is. And I do I do the same here with the villains. 
uh, except I just mm -hmm. basically just track their wins and losses and see some of them I still haven't even faced. Like Bob, I have not faced Bob as a villain yet, just because yeah, yeah. his number hasn't come up yet. No, same, yeah, yeah. Same with Ronan. Yeah. Sticking to the the um the uh the random, yeah. I, yeah, there's a bunch. I, I'm still not all the way through all the 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 villains that that uh, from the base game that I've got. The problem is I've because I've <laughs> launched into this homebrew stuff. It's like <laughs> I I feel like I sort of um I have to do do them justice. Like if I'm trying out say Nellies or Helioses or uh, Helios 23s or all the different guys um. I have to do, you know, I have to get enough play tests and stuff to do them justice and that sort of thing. So I'm always right. <laughs> like re replaying those rather than doing the the original stuff. But um, we'll get there. <laughs> it's a, a good problem to have, you know. Too much Marvel United. To play I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, I've got um, I've got a template ready to go if you like. Okay, so... here, let me get rid of this one here. All right. So let's go. Let me see now. Okay, fingers crossed. Here we go. So present. Mm, share screen, share screen. Okay, uh, and then Saget, share. All right, now, can you guys see that? Let's see. Hold on. Let me add it to the stream. Yep. There we go. All right. Nice, nice. Okay. Now, I wonder. If, mm, I wonder if I should open this up. I'm not going to no, I'm not going to do that because I wonder if that's going to mess. I'm just going to let. So I I currently cannot see the stream, but I think that's probably best if I don't mess with that. <laughs> 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 um, so yeah, here this is one that I've already sort of pre-filled out. I don't know if I've. I think I'm only halfway through filling this one out, but you can sort of see. So this is Sagat. Um, I've got some special rules here, so uh, I just put down here. This is just um, this wouldn't be the full text, but uh, if if he KOs, um, he doesn't play his BAM again. He he puts a face down uh, master plan card. His BAM effect here: deal one damage to one hero. Oh yeah, this is this is actually this is real old. This is this was his first iteration. This is interesting. So um, when I do eventually show off Sagat uh, on the channel, uh, you'll see he's nothing like this. Because <laughs> 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 um, this was based on I just was like, oh yeah. Um, What's he, what's he like? Oh, he's a big, tall guy, so maybe he's got like a long reach. So he punches you, but he also does a punch to a hero in the adjacent location because he's got, he's basically so big, he sort of like punches two people at once sort of thing. Oh, cool. Um, and, um, yeah, that was my sort of initial thought there. And then if we have a look here, uh, master plan cards, I had him doing like elbows and clinches. So I looked up all these like, okay, how did my – my Thai boxers actually fight, so I was trying to use a, like moves from that. Um, and then I then I, I went, oh, what am I doing? I'm trying to capture Sagat from Street Fighter, not like an actual Mai Tai fighter. So then I went right back to the drawing board, and now he basically just throws tigers at you, like tiger, tiger. Um, and if you remember Tiger, he he uh, not, uh, not Tiger Sagat, he used to sort of do like a low tiger and a high tiger. Yeah. Um, so the whole concept of his villain fight is he's throwing these tigers either high or low so the card will say tiger it'll say like high or low um and you either have to jump over them with a move so if he throws a low one you've got to like reveal a move card from your hand and put it at the bottom of your deck and draw a new one but you have to have move cards in your hand essentially to yeah. jump it um or if he throws a high one you've got to uh reveal a, a star to either block it or um duck it i guess um so you've got to like you know <laughs> you got to like duck and weave these these different um these tigers coming at you so that's so cool man that feels really <laughs> thematic too so, well that's what i thought I was like, how, what does a fight against to get like what you know what and, and it was all based on my memories of like 20 years ago or 30 years ago <laughs> so I'm, i don't know he probably has a lot of other moves that he does as well but it was it was kind of like that and his tiger uppercuts where he just kind of moves moves to you and um does an uppercut and like knocks you backwards sort of thing so um, right yeah but i've got so this is the this is the um the template here so who who are we thinking for a, a villain candidate okay so let's go with one that uh was high up on my wish list and it'll be the easiest one for us to do because i already kind of worked out maybe 20 percent of it oh nice maybe. okay yep, yep yeah so we can so, start filling this in yep let's go with hydro man Hydro Man, all right. Yeah. It, so, when you say Hydro Man, is he like 
he uses water. Yeah, he yep, he okay. turns into water. Um, I'm going mostly off of from the Spider-Man cartoon from the '90s because that's where my heart and soul lives. Oh, so, nice. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it sounds like he could be he could be like a ring in for the uh, the Sinister Six. Like he's just one of those like you, know, you totally. got like Electro Man and you got like. <laughs> a, um, so if I go uh, now, so you guys can see me as I do this. Is this right? If I yep. see that on the yep, Hydro Man. Is it hydro like two words or is it one word? It's uh, it it's two really words matter. hyphenated like Spider Man. Oh, sweet. Right, yeah. There we go. Nice, nice, nice. So, um, so I'll just take you through the template just uh, to start with. Essentially, this is the dashboard. Uh -huh. um, then we've got space for uh, the master plan card. So you can see you've got the cards. And this is, again, this is, um, I should give props to Helios23. This is his. Um, Really cool, and and all of this stuff he he has shared on the drive, like or in in um, Marvel United Discord, he's he's like made a a channel or whatever they call it, like a a post in there where he shared these templates, and you can go in and you can you can use them, sort of thing. So um, yeah, this is all stuff that you can you can access if you if, if you want to sort of delve into this area. But uh, mm -hmm. you can see you got the cards here, and then you've got like. Um, if they're going to have uh, a movement, you know, how, how you set the movement up, how you do the BAMs. Um, uh, you've got whether there's like an effect uh, here or uh, there's um, titles for those and also placement, you know, like the different um, civilians and thugs and that sort of thing as well. Then you've got the, the threats, the different types of threats. So it could be like a henchman or it could be a, you know, a landing effect type oh, one. Wow. Um, Helios thought it, of everything. Yeah, he's, yeah, it's very, very cool. Like he, he really has opened up the, the world of homebrew for for everyone to be able to sort of, to do this sort of stuff because he's made it very accessible and and very easy to use. So, uh, big props to him. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, also very patient uh, because he's helped me online uh, trying to navigate some of this stuff and <laughs> was very patient with me while I was like, so which box do I click on again? And like. <laughs> There's no your other left, you know. So like, um, yeah. So all very good. So, um, all right. So Hydro Man. Um, so where 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 are you starting? Like, so what have you already, um, what have you got in mind for him? So I've got some. Uh, what I've got in mind is his plot and his win effect and mm -hmm. how the heroes would uh, weaken him essentially. And for his uh, villainous plot, mm -hmm. I'm thinking. Plain and simple, we we yep. don't stray too far outside the box. We go with stuff they've already given us, which is you're gonna get a little Mary Jane token. Oh, and yep. He's trying to get her. So he if okay. he's ever alone with Mary Jane, mm -hmm. the heroes lose. Okay, so if Hydro oops, uh if Oh, this is <laughs> I can see there's a there's a big problem with me being the one controlling this. <laughs> my type my typing speed. All right. <laughs> it's like one finger at a time. If Hydro Man um uh is ever alone in a location. And it's funny, they sort of capitalize weird words. They do. Thing. So location is one that I remember to capitalize. Although I was always capitalizing action and apparently action is not capitalized but anyway yeah, yeah, uh right. hydro man is ever alone in a location um uh oh sorry a location with oh goodness all right if hydro man is ever alone with mary jane is it yep mary jane is that hyphenated no no hyphen for no that. all right Again, these are the things that don't really matter while you're just mocking it up. But uh, with Mary Lane in a location, um, the heroes lose. Okay, there we go. Uh, so we've got his villainous plot sorted, done. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, oh, that look. was plain. Like in the cartoon, he was always after her. So I figured that's the, the best way to go. We'll, we'll base it off that. Nice, uh, nice. Well, that gives that gives us another token that um, um, minis from Mars are going to have to design too, like he designed the Senator exactly. Kelly. Exactly. <laughs> because are, are we getting this this year? I think we're getting Betty Ross and Rick Jones, right? And Rick Jones, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And we we, we keep we <laughs> we keep rubbing it into <laughs> uh, minis from Mars. Like, come on, you got to design those too. <laughs> um, 
Uh, yeah, but the, the the guy behind that, he's he's a really nice guy, top top bloke. Um, uh, the guy from Minis from Mars too. Cool. So um, yeah, a guy named Dan. Uh, um, okay, and you you said that uh, now if we've got Mary Jane, um, maybe just as a even if you don't have the the full concept of it thought out yet, we could pop up in special setup um, something about like place Mary Jane. Uh, token in the hero starting location or something like that. Yeah, perfect. All right, heroes. Oops. Um, oh, my. Uh, the heroes would be like that, wouldn't it? Apostrophe at the end of yes. that. All right, uh, heroes. Uh, <laughs> I was like, geez, my <laughs> grammar's failing me here. Place Mary Jane token in the hero's uh, starting location. Starting location. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. Um, what else? What else have we have we thought of? Um, and in terms of how we beat him, in the mm -hmm. cartoon, Spider-Man did this thing, and Mary Jane too. She helped out where they were. They drew him away from the water, so they okay. actually went to a paper factory. Like they found the driest place they could, and then he was like, "Oh, I'm falling apart." Um, <laughs> so it would be something like. He is constantly kind of almost in a Sandman-esque way. They really are very similar, him and Sandman, mm -hmm. where he's okay. constantly going to certain spots that will rejuvenate him, like filling up his water, and you mm -hmm. are trying to keep him from doing that and dry him out. Uh, yeah. And then once he's dried out, then you can you know take a swing and take him out. So he might be one of those villains who, kind of like Taskmaster, where... It's hard to hit him. He's slippery, but when yeah. you can start hitting him, he he doesn't have a whole lot of health. Ah, okay, okay. So maybe um, so it sounds like it might not necessarily be a heroic goal, but it's just it's part of his special rule. So, um, and at this stage, if if you don't have it sort of fully conceptualized, we can still write down that um, heroes are trying to. Um, so, uh, trying to keep him away from certain locations or trying to dry him out. Um, yeah, what? that would be done via um, th like clearing threats would mm -hmm. would basically dry out a location. Mm -hmm. uh, so every threat card could sort of symbolize like water pipes or a swimming pool or just mm -hmm. anything Hydro Man could use to build himself up. Yep. Um, and as long as Hydro Man is in a location with any of those, he can't be damaged. So you uh, okay, you basically yeah. got to get as many of those out as as you can. Yeah, sweet. So this might not something that uh, might not be something that we necessarily need to have in this special rules things, but it can be helpful just while you're trying to think of your ideas and stuff to sort of jot these sorts of things down in in a spot like this. So that that would mean we could go to say the threat cards. And it sounds like these threat cards might be along the lines of this type where it's like uh, they affect the location. So, um, and see that, so we've got these ticked here. So we might have um, um, here uh, as long as this threat is in play or this card is in play. Um, Hydro Man cannot be damaged. Um, maybe right? as oh. long as he's on the spot. Oh, okay. As as he's on the spot. Yeah. Um, all right. Now, I think that is still as long as um, as Hydro Man is um on. Or in in this how in, they say in, that? I think in, they say in, in this location. Yeah. In this location, um, uh, he cannot let's say take damage or be damaged. Take damage. And again, you can you can always yeah adjust this as you go. Uh, he cannot take damage. And I think that is still even though it's to do with him being on the location because it's not him doing something when he arrives. We don't use this. Um, the target location sort of thing with the little target symbol on it, we still use this one here. So we're going right. to 
keep that as one of those there. So um, now, how? So uh, what? What would the title for that be? Would that be like? Um, so like these would uh, be like let's say various things like a swimming pool, any or a fire yeah. hydrant, anything okay. that yeah. thematically he could pop out of and strengthen himself with. Yeah. The swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what you could do as well. Um, you could also you, like we could change this to actually make it like a one of these landing locations and have as like an additional effect um so like this is like an on you know this is like okay as long as he's in this location he cannot take damage but we could also have like and you actually might let's let's put that let's oh now i'm going to do the copy paste thing all right copy <laughs> uh paste Oh no! Hold on. I have to do the old old school. There we go. All yeah. right. Uh, <laughs> um, then we might do um, uh, up here. Like it could be like, hey, so in the swimming pool, because he can grab a like, you know, you know, he like he does something in the swimming pool which might be different to say the hydrant. Yes, absolutely. Um, like, and he, you know, he blasts water into an adjacent location with the hydrant. Where, whereas with the swimming pool, maybe he like attacks a bunch of civilians because they're all swimming at the pool or something, you know, something like that. So, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's change these to these ones here. Now, how many of these were, were you wanting each of the threats to be these? So, like, that rather than you don't want any henchmen or like. He doesn't sound like someone who would have henchmen, right? Yeah, he's not really a henchman kind of guy. I think these would be, yeah. even though I love when henchmen show up in the villains, it's yeah, like my yeah. favorite. This definitely suits him more like this. Yeah, yeah, sweet. All right, so I'll uh, copy and then let's we'll do uh, control V. I probably could actually highlight multiple of these and do the same thing, but I'm just going to do slow mo. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right, and nice. um, and happy to have them all cleared with heroics. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Seems nice. About right. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So now again, we don't have to necessarily think of all of these. Oopsie. We oh, sorry, we got either. Craig in the chat here. Hi, Craig. We're working on Hydro Man. We're gonna see if Hydro we can make Man. This happen. Yeah. All right. Um, so what? Okay. So what are some other uh, other locations that could be and the other thing too you could do like two like you could do say two swimming pools two hydrants because they often have them in those sets don't they yeah or you're if, right, you wanted to, if you really wanted to but you know if you really wanted to have fun with it you could make each of them a different um uh different thing too so yeah your yeah. your choice um, i love your hydrant idea where he shoots at the adjacent location and does the damage mm -hmm. so i think that's perfect. let's let's pop that in so that one yeah. was at the hydrant so um uh um deal a damage to uh is it like one uh yeah one this one hero? will be uh one da a damage to one hero in and this could be good because he he could maybe be oh no he's trying to get to mary jane isn't he? he's not trying to blast her because i was going to say like he could be trying to blast her but okay deal a damage to one hero in and adjacent location maybe maybe we say deal because it's like high pressure maybe we say deal two damage to one hero especially because it's only hitting one yeah maybe we make this a stronger one so like maybe make it two damage to one hero in an adjacent location Good call. Uh, yeah location and uh okay so what do we want to say for the swimming pool? Maybe um uh maybe this you know what would be a good one for the swimming pool if he's sort mm -hmm. of pulling people under. This can mm -hmm. be one of those ones where if you want to leave the swimming pool, you need two movement instead of one movement. Oh, okay. Yep, yep, yep. So um heroes um using uh move to leave this location uh must use 
Uh, move. Let's see, move, move. Um, <laughs> riveting YouTube. <laughs> You're actually using move to, because uh, I usually do it with that symbol, right? So like using yeah. the symbol to leave this location, must use move, move um, uh, instead or something. Yeah. Perfect. Excellent. Uh, and I'm sure there's plenty of um, card with that writing. We could always look it up and, and yeah. fix that up too. Yep, yep, sweet. Okay. So All that's right. that one done. So now, do we want to have two of those, like to, like two of each, or do you want to have different ones for each one? Let's see. Let's see how many different ones we can come up with, and then yeah, yeah. if we're struggling, maybe we can go <laughs> with like another hybrid or something. Um, and feel free in the chat if you've got some ideas for yeah, us. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Maybe I, the, the the Hoover Dam or something, you know. <laughs> ooh, well, that's definitely one of his locations. Um, another one we could do. Uh, another threat would be um, bathtub. Like, like a, ooh, yeah, <laughs> Ghostbusters too. He's coming yeah, out of the yeah. <laughs> We could uh, we could do like water pipes, um, water and this pipes, one yeah. could do like if he lands on it, the pipes burst. So okay, yeah. They could do one damage to each hero in this location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Deal one damage to each hero in this location now the only thing is oh no okay yeah i was just going to say okay so i guess that that's going to come into it with the either special rules or the master plan card as well master plan cards is um like how does he because you could see it could be quite easy just to sort of always be in the location with um yes uh, with, with mary, uh, mary jane. jane you know um how does he stop us from doing that like how does he make sure to clear us away from locations or how does he pull her into different locations or force her to move so um i wonder if some of these could be um you know heroes using like this one where he uses the hydrant uh deal two damage to one hero in an adjacent location um, and push all all heroes out of that location or something like that. You know what I mean? Like we could do, we could do stuff right, like yeah, that. Yeah, one where, of us could do that. Yeah. yeah, one, yeah the thing yeah. I was thinking for, mm -hmm. in terms of Mary Jane, is mm -hmm. first of all, I know just based off like what I remember from like Sabretooth and stuff, um, his BAM should mm -hmm. probably almost always, if not always, should probably take him right to wherever she is. Ah, oh, yes. Okay. Yep, yep, um, yep. And one of the easiest ways to kind of get him to use that against the heroes is every time a hero is KO'd, mm -hmm. Mary Jane moves to the opposite location. Okay. So um, every, oopsie. Um, every time a hero is KO'd. I think the way that you normally word, word that is um, um, like when a hero is KO'd or something like that. But every right. time a hero is KO'd, um, move, um, whoopsie, move Mary Jane to the opposite location. Yeah, so it's kind of like she's getting washed to sea yeah. and using yeah. her. <laughs> now, is that only if she's sharing that location? That's a good question. Um, These are the things that can be ironed out in, in um, playtesting too, right? Like yes. you know, things you don't think of. You're like, oh, oh yeah, how's that going to work if this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, okay, cool. Because even if it could... It could just be like she just gets it could just be almost like a randomizer for her like she just gets moved around no matter where you get hit but we could add we could always add if you if we if we thought it needed it we could add like every time a hero is ko'd um or every time you know a hero is ko'd uh when in the same location with mary jane move her to the opposite location or something like that but right i think for, i think for now we can probably just leave it and um yeah that's good Okay, uh, let's have a look at these threats. We've got three of them. Well, I mean, that's good because that means we've got at least, we've got the full set, right? If we've got three, we could double exactly. each one. Um, or if we, so can you think of any more? So uh, hydrant, swimming pool. Let's see here. I um, think one, um, 
one that might be kind of this one would be tricky but it would be thematic and it would be kind of fun i don't know what yeah, his yeah. overflow effect is yet oh yeah yeah we, yep. we should probably figure out the overflow but for one it yeah, could be yeah. like a kitchen sink or a bathtub right? oh yeah 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 and <laughs> when he lands there he's mm -hmm. coming out of a faucet so he's scaring the crap out of everybody so when he lands on that spot, all the civilians freak out and they run to adjacent locations. So it could cause overflows. Oh, okay. Yep. Spots. Yep. Okay. So um, let's call it. Um, uh, <laughs> we could have a toilet bowl. Could come out of the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kitchen. Let's just call it kitchen sink because that sounds funny. Kitchen sink. Um, so uh, move all. Um, and I think to be more likely to cause overflow, we should move them to one location. So maybe we just say like move it one location clockwise or something like that. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, so move. Well, and Nelly Nell is back and he says, I just got back and read Place Mary as Pac-Man and got real confused how we got here. <laughs> uh, move all civilian um, to the next location. See, likewise. Yeah, that'll definitely cause some chaos. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Because overflow sounds good for him, right? Because it's like you know, overflow, like flowing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it could almost be like uh, if if it overflows, like uh, if there's an overflow, like moves. That could be another thing that moves Mary Jane, like she gets washed, Ooh, washed away or something as well. Yeah um okay um but sometimes it's also good to have like uh like if we think about like his bam um like what's you know is um did we did we write his bam did, or did we, we don't have his bam yet we've, we've got the move mary jane oh hey here he moves yeah, to mary mary Jane's location yeah. um like we probably want him to like he could move to mary jane's location do some sort of a hit and then push the other heroes out, like wash them away from her as well, so that you have limited time with her. Um, but we also sort of want to think, okay, so like, is he the sort of hero where do we want him to bam? Like, okay, let's say he bams. He, he, he's going to move to Mary Jane's location. So what's the advantage of him like KOing us? Like if he's, if he bams again and then just gets to move to her, he's or, he's already there. So maybe is his bam, is, sorry, is his KO effect um, going to be one of those ones that helps him race the clock as well? So that gives him another way he can win uh, by playing master plan cards face down Ooh, in the okay. line. You know what I mean? Like if, yeah. if he's, if his bam, like if him damaging us is kind of incidental, it doesn't, like he's not working towards KOing a number of us and things like that. Um, like, especially if, if he's going to move to us, sorry, move straight to her and then his bam pushes us away anyway. Um, there's no real need for him to bam us again by KOing us because we've already been pushed away. So he might be one I'm thinking just, um, that as we go through and develop this, he 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 might benefit from like um, that being his his uh, KO effect sort of thing. Um, yeah. So speaking of that, how much damage do you think? Do you, do you want him to do damage to us when he lands, like when he bams us? Uh, yeah, I think that to... one damage uh, one damage should be pretty good. Maybe because he's watery. Maybe like one damage to each hero. Yeah. Yeah. Deal one damage to each hero in oh, i don't know how that i always forget how they they say hydromans or the villain's location or hydromans uh location i think in in this case, I think the mm -hmm. way they would word it is mm -hmm. move to Mary Jane's location and mm -hmm. deal one damage to each hero there. Oh, each hero. I feel like yep. that's how yep. they would do it. Okay, each hero there. Um, and um, now, do you do you want to have a thing where he he then pushes us out? Um, uh, let's each, see. Like each hero must 
move to an adjacent location or we'll, we could just leave it, leave it for there at the moment. So I think if he does that before the heroes are KO'd, would that be too difficult then? Cause then he's pushing you right away and then he's basically got her. Oh, that's right. Because it's, uh, that's right. If, if he's ever by himself, that's yes. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That would be, that'd be <laughs> first, first turn instant win. <laughs> yeah. So this is why you gotta, you gotta, do, do some play testing <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> to work out the mistakes in your in your in your plan or well, my plan at least that that was that was my idea all right yeah <laughs> okay so deal, deal deal yeah 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 okay we'll leave that yeah leave um yeah, yeah, yeah. i think that sounds good um so that okay so boom 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 yeah because that 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 could make this really dangerous too where he um he might, you know, the hydrant where he pushes pushes a hero away. But I, I, I guess that's good. But he's only pushing one hero away, right? Right. And it gives you time to sort of try and get back with, with other heroes and things. Um, okay. So we've got the kitchen sink. We've got, and again, we could sort of have some of these be doubles and some of them be individuals too. But um, all right, that's good. Mm. I feel like water pipes we could duplicate yep let's do hmm, i wonder if this is going to work copy control v oh, look at that brilliant excellent nice. so we've got two water pipes and maybe do you want to go two hydrants or, or two or two swimming pool ones i feel like him being watery he'd be sort of like hampering our especially if we're trying to sort of keep up with her and like yeah i think maybe him having two of the, like these these become like oh they're really nasty ones we want to get get rid of sort of thing i, I think that's a good call man yeah, yeah. all right swimming so pool. let's go swimming pool um copy and paste there we go all right so we've got all of our threats done um now the other cool thing about master plan right so if if you um you i think you were saying was it he's similar to sandman uh yeah just in terms of how their like their bodies are kind of broken down and sandman's oh, always okay. growing yeah. yeah because um another thing that uh some of the homebrewers do is another approach is that they'll that they'll have an idea like a concept for uh uh a villain and to help sort of ensure that that villain kind of works mechanically pr pretty soundly they'll they'll take an existing uh villains master plan deck and sort of base this new villain around that deck like you know just use the same same deck so it's got like the same spread of movements and the same spread of like dropping tokens and stuff and then maybe just tweaking it as they need to and like you know making up their own special abilities to replace right. the special abilities there so um you know if sandman for example had uh cards that seemed like they would work pretty well with this you could basically just sort of take sandman's cards um and that would help you sort of with your spread of movements and and that sort of thing otherwise you can just kind of like <laughs> what i've tended to do is just sort of <laughs> randomly make them up and see if it works <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, that's a good idea though yeah because otherwise that that's that's quite a thing to think about right it's like okay well how many movements are you going to have what direction are they going to go in um you know it seems to be most most a lot of the villains tend to have things that are like you know they'll have like uh a zero and a five uh lots of ones and twos maybe a couple of threes mm -hmm. so you can you know um sometimes depending on the, the way the villain works they'll have a bunch where they move directly to the heroes as well. Um, yeah. But since you've got that mechanic where it's tied to the BAM, you may not need that type. You, you can rely on the, the random sort of movement instead. Um, yeah, and you know, some heroes that like to try and stay away from the opponents uh so they can like hit them with range attacks like i think bullseye kind of works like that they have some that are like that say i'll oh, move move to the directly to the location with no heroes or something like that yeah bullseye is all about the long range stuff yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so um 
yeah so but if you so if i don't know if you do you feel like taking a crack at the master plan cards or because i feel like they're probably a fairly big um fairly big thing to think about so yeah i think I'm that just, uh they're I'm, they're definitely something that could be done down the line as like a yeah just, just, thing the just a bit worried for, for those watching you know <laughs> it might yeah. take us a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so well if you're happy I'll, I'll just um i'll go back to the dashboard so we'll just have a look there so we, we know we've, we've got some good threats there mm -hmm. so the dashboard we've got some good stuff there we um now the overflow um I don't think we need a heroic goal here. We're, we're not really going for our own heroic goal here. Um, health, we can work out down the track. Yeah. Like you said, probably keep it relatively low because we're trying to sort of dry him out sort of thing. Yeah, he's he's um, going to be hard to hit. So I would yeah. say like four HP for like a four player game, maybe. right? Oh, four, like, okay, four for that. So maybe go like uh, two, three, four, something like that. Yeah. So, three, four, and then you can adjust as you need to. Um, and then over, what did we say was overflow? Like maybe overflow was going to wash, uh, wash heroes away or something. The, uh, the civilians. Um, oh no, wait, hold on. What did over, did we come up with it? I know. I, was... I don't think we, I don't think we, I, I sort of like mentioned something roughly in passing, but I don't think we actually came up with one. Right. I think we, I think we said it was really important that we came up with one, but we we didn't actually say what it was. <laughs> yeah, you're right. We had one of the threats caused overflow. Or could cause overflow. Yes. Yeah, that's with true. With the yeah, kitchen yeah, yeah. sink, but it yeah we didn't yeah. Uh, figure it out. So I think you said something about literal overflow, like it's it'll wash characters away. So yeah. Um, I think if there is overflow in a location, then. It would be kind of like who is it? I think Thanos, where it might not be Thanos, but where mm -hmm. you have to add it to the next clockwise location, and okay. that would wash um, Mary Jane as well if she is there. So if she's in a location that overflows, she gets washed to the next one. Okay, so if a civilian thug cannot be placed in this location. Um, so are you saying that, okay, so if, if overflow happens where Mary Jane is not, does anything happen? Yep. They would still go to the next clockwise that oh, so, whatever, so, where we have to place the pieces. So the actual, um, so the civil, so basically if a civilian or thug cannot be placed in this location, um, place it in, um, the, the next, next clockwise clockwise location um because i think if i'm if, if my mental chess game is working yeah, right yeah. here mm -hmm. that will fill up spaces fast yes yeah um and that means more overflows happen which means more chances of mary jane getting washed away from you yes yeah so, so do we need to say in here so if a civilian cannot be placed in this location place it in the next clockwise location uh and then something about um if uh mary jane is in a or i'm just wondering if if this um this statement about if Mary Jane is in the, I wonder if that's something you can just write in the special rules. Like if Mary Jane is in a location that overflows, move her to the next, do you know yeah. what I mean? So that way you can save space in, because often the overflow is quite a small. Yeah. It's just a little thing. corner of the dashboard. You're right. Special setups so is, Nate, is probably the best place for it. It's just one of those special things. Rules. It's like, Oh, where, where yeah. does it, where does it fit better? people to understand it better like should we keep it with overflow since it's like an overflow thing or should we keep it in there but let, let's just for now we'll put it in here and then we can yeah. play around with that kind of so. like how i because it's in the special rules for mystique i think where they say senator kelly is considered a hero when it comes to damage like all that yeah. stuff so yeah you're right this yeah. is where they would put it uh, if mary jane is in a location uh that overflows um oops overflows um move move her um one location clockwise and that way she could keep getting pushed exactly yeah yeah like you said all right so one uh i don't know if it should be the word or the numeral uh location clockwise um and blah 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 
Mary Jane is in a location that overflows. Move her one location clockwise. Nice. Um, and good. We can probably get this thing out. We can probably take this out now because we don't need this reminder about the drying out thing because we've got that already taken care right. of. Thank you. So every time a hero is KO'd, move Mary Jane to the opposite location. Um, and I might add here and place a uh, master plan plan card base down in the storyline. Yeah. Story line. Okay. Where are we? I've lost my spot in that uh, sentence. There we go. All right, good. Okay. Uh, cool. All right. So we've got the health. Got the villainous plot. We've got the overflow. We've got the bam. Uh, we've got the yeah, we've got, yeah, all all good. Sweet. That's pretty good. So I'll I'll if if you're happy with that, I'll hop out of. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> I could be saying goodbye now. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna hit stop sharing, and we'll see if that works. All and right. Hopefully, I'll be back. All right. Uh, now, Minnie's from Mars. Yay! Yes. Yay! <laughs> we did a thing with computer. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's now, Minnie's from Mars has to get on making that little Zendaya miniature. Yes. And we're all going. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's why I'm uh, stoked with the um, the Street Fighter stuff. Um, yeah. Because uh, Big Head Chibis, they, they, they're making a bunch of of the Street Fighter minis. Um, so I'm gonna. I'm basically just gonna sort of follow which which models they make, and then I'll make <laughs> rules for them, sort of thing. That's oh, why I did okay. a Sagat because they did a, a Sagat as well. Um, and for the the brute force guys, <laughs> I've just got my daughter's like little uh, plastic animals, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just using those. So they're they're pretty cool. But um, yeah. So uh, so Hydra Man villain done. I'm I'm impressed. We got. I don't know how uh, exciting that was for people to watch. <laughs> Me fumble my way through an excel sheet but we did it and, and at least that shows shows folks like the the process and how how you can sort of like use a spreadsheet like that to help you conceptualize what you want to do and get your ideas down and, and that sort of thing and and um and make it a reality sort of thing so um yeah yeah very cool so we got and, and we got uh, armor as well very highly requested yes uh, look at that i mean if we are not helping the community out with that that's i mean what else what else is there that's all I can hope is somebody from CMON right now is like. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, okay, don't do that. We won't. <laughs> Learn Excel. <Yeah. laughs> Very cool. But that's awesome, man, because yeah. I, awesome. I have never known. I mean, I've seen so many homebrews on your channel. I've seen other people make, like, just show off their homebrews. Obviously, there was that big Ninja Turtles one that made a lot of waves. But oh, yes. I, awesome. I was yeah. always, yeah. like, completely in the dark as to, like, how did that this process come about? So it's mm. so cool to see it from yeah. behind the curtain and see, like, yeah. how it all comes together. And, look, that's that's just sort of, like, how I think about it. And and basically, my, my way I go about it, I guess, has been informed by how Helios has sort of set up his templates and that sort of thing as well. I'm sure there's lots of different approaches and, and that sort of thing as well. But um, I know that uh, Kanji Studios, uh, Kanji from um, Kanji Studios, uh, mm -hmm. he's been working on uh, some really cool stuff. Uh, he's doing the, he's currently going through and doing the the Brotherhood, separating them out into individual villains. Oh, nice. Um, so they're looking, he's, he's already got Blob done. Blob's, oh man, Blob's a challenge, but he, he's, he's pretty fun. Uh, and he's just done Pyro. Like he's got all of them, he's got, Pyro and Toad as well. I think Pyro is the the second one he's he's sort of got done, um, and he's about to launch into Toad. He's also going to do the Acolytes. Um, is it Fabian Cortez, I think he's the the dude nice. with the Acolytes. I think he's going to yeah. do them. Um, and uh, so so yeah, like he, and he's got a different sort of way. I, I think he goes about uh, aiming it. And I think um, what what's really impressive with and and I. I I think it sort of comes through with the design you just done there with uh, Hydra Man is if you can capture like um, that feel of the actual official Marvel United villains. Um, and I think Nelly does a good job with this as well, um, where you put plenty of theme in, but they, they're nice and streamlined. There's not too much getting in the way and too many different ideas clashing and that sort of thing. And I think with some of my earlier... Um, 
earlier, villains especially, uh, like Cameron Hodge um, and Arlong and um, Boa Hancock from One Piece. Um, with those, I got very caught up in in the story, like what story they're a part of. And right. so all of the elements are like different story ideas and this and that. And so there's a lot of different stuff going on and things that trigger at certain parts of the, the game. And, and, you know, and then this changes and this. And, um, and I've come to appreciate uh, like just that real simplicity of design and, and, and keeping it really work within that simple framework of, of uh, Marvel United. And hopefully I've, I, I'm fingers crossed uh, when I show it off Sagat, I think Sagat is my first attempt at doing just like a, just a straight normal, uh, you know, easily played uh, villain sort of thing. It's not too much bells and whistles and stuff like that. So yeah, like a core um, box villain, just ready yeah, to yeah, play. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I think um, I got so excited with all of the stuff with that they announced in, um, like, I think from the from the second set, like uh, the Brotherhood in particular, I was really excited. I really loved the idea that like, oh my god, they've taken this system and they've made a villain that's like a three three person battle sort of thing, and then hearing um, them talk about all the different stuff like the way that Dakan's going to work and the way that uh iron patriot's going to work and um us agent like i was like oh my god look at the way these guys like totally change how you play the game um and so that was what sort of got me inspired with cameron hodges like oh how could you play with the storyline and yeah. have to sort of go back on the, like, oh. and so i got really excited with that side of things um, and I, I think it's still fun. I think that's, that still works. But um, now I'm like, oh, yeah, maybe just pull back from trying to completely redesign the, the system and actually like, okay, how, how can you make the, the strong system itself work for you and, and, uh, and, and be a nice, smooth, smooth play sort of thing. So. Yeah, because yeah, that, that is the, the fun of, of the game and just what makes it run like butter. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll be curious to see like this time next year, when we all have our hands on season three, I'd be curious to see what the homebrew community feels uh, they can accomplish at that point, because yeah. just looking at what the villains are going to be like in this season coming up, it seems like they really got complicated. And yeah. like, Abomination, I remember, sounded really tough and, and like different. Titania, Lizard, um, who Null. Null sounded yeah. like I was like, do I even want to fight this guy? This sounds horrifying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think that's what sort of informed, especially a lot of the early stuff I was doing, um, is because I was sort of um, in this paradigm of like, oh, like, how do I change everything? Like, how do I change it? How do I make this character very different? Because in my head, we're all these new ones that are coming out sort of thing. So, yeah. Um, but... Uh, having what what sort of like turned the corner for me a little bit is uh, having played um uh nelly's like buggy the clown and one i haven't shown off yet but like captain kuro um and um helios's um what's his name crocodile um they're all like they're not they don't change things up too much. Like they're still super fun and they've got these, like they've got the, the thing that captures, you know, that villain really well done, but within a way that's, um, that's yeah, fairly normal. And the same thing with like Kanji uh, has done the same thing, like with his, his, um, his brotherhood. Um, yeah. So that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, and oh, I, sh I should mention as well, um, Dave, you know, uh, I think his name is Diversion Architect, Dave. Um, yeah, Diversion Singer. Architect. Yeah. yeah, he's he's uh, he's also uh, really doing great great stuff at the moment. He he's uh, working on uh, another sort of template, I guess, if you will, uh, for people to be able to use to to put together their villains and heroes and that sort of thing using, I think, InDesign rather than Photoshop. Although I think InDesign is part of the Adobe sort of genre of things but uh so that that'll be another option for people to use as well if you if you know how to use it uh, in design um and he's done some great stuff with that uh, age apocalypse stuff so uh um, oh, yeah is he the like, one who did abyss is that him yeah abyss yeah. and sugar man um and i think he's a great i think he's a, like really in the middle like he, he's got that they, they they still feel although mikhail mikhail's a little <laughs> He's got. He's also done Mikhail uh, Rasputin, I think his name is, uh -huh. and he 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 sort of veers into the like, whoa, there's lots of stuff going on uh, with the way he works or thing. But um, 
but like Abyss and Sugar Man, like they still have some really interesting, unique things going on. But again, uh, still uh, manageable, and they feel uh, feel like a nice, smooth sort of game sort of thing. Uh, yeah, so really some cool stuff there. So he and he uh, with with his new template that he's doing, uh, his the way he's presented them now, like the graphical layout of those is looking really nice too. So I think they're just about ready to be sort of uh, released if, if not already um, in the drive there. So oh, cool. that stuff's looking good. And, and um, uh, he's also, um, he's got himself involved with, I don't know if you're familiar with the, the I think it's a wiki site called Fandom. Um, no. So whenever you look up, like whenever you like type in, you know, pop culture things, often like the site that will pop up is like, especially if it's like video games and stuff like that, I, I seem to find them a lot, um, is this wiki site called Fandom. Um, and he also, he already had his own website that he's made up for the homebrew community to sort of, he dumps everyone's homebrew stuff in there so you can access it. But I think he's got himself like, um, uh, what do they call it? Like when you're a, a mod or something, like he's given, he's got himself um, like, creative rights there or something like that's where he can sort of set things up so he's he's setting up um a space where you can go in if you're a homebrew designer you can go in and basically like put your stuff on this page so it's a easily findable thing on this uh fandom uh, wiki site and have like a, a blurb for like what your character's about and, and who they are and then like have links to where you can sort of uh, download them and that sort of thing as well so um i don't know if that's quite set up and ready to go yet but uh yeah, definitely check that out. He's he's done some good work with that. So that's terrific. Yeah, yeah. yeah those, those Age of Apocalypse homebrews were really really good. Yeah, oh, yeah. mate, like so good. Um, and um, yeah, the, Abyss especially. Like he's he's so interesting in the way he like sucks the the civilians and the and the characters into into like his dashboards. The thing is pretty fun too. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. really uh, curious now to try that Brotherhood, the split up Brotherhood because that's yeah. You, you got your minis it's ready to go it's perfect yeah I, I definitely i'd like to sort of uh to to film them um coming up the, the the thing that's kind of slowing me down at the moment is i'm just starting to like print these guys off as you can see and i'm just trying to work out the best way to to print out the um the villains i'm deciding whether i go to, like the, the cardboard try and find a place that does the cardboard uh a person on uh, marvel united discord named Noda, i think it was um just just put up like a site i think it's called um printandplay.com or something like that where you might be able to get them done there too so um but i'd like to once i get these sort of printed out i'd like to sort of get them shown on the on the channel and that sort of thing but if you in the meantime uh, rather than having to wait for me if you go to marvel united discord kanji's first two blob and pyro i think are up uh, i'm pretty sure Ooh. pyro's up as well so if you yeah if you go into those homebrew i don't know what they are they channels or threads or something um but you'll you can find like the links to the uh the drives there and and, and download them there so perfect yeah, you can definitely try them out nice yeah, yeah. Oh, i think that's pretty successful i think we did yeah. I think we did well one we hero, did okay one, for one villain yeah yeah i'm i i to be honest, i wasn't thinking of doing a villain i was i was like oh a villain's gonna be too too tricky but uh we did it we, we nailed it <laughs> if this was season one days we, we would just made half an expansion right there yeah yeah that's right yeah yeah that's right <laughs> oh okay, awesome value. man well, thank you for sharing your yeah, like, no, right. amazing homebrew uh, like methods with us. Because now, that's you know, okay. I'm sure lots of people wanted to know how that gets done, as me included. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we, yeah, know. Yeah. Now we yeah, know. yeah, definitely, definitely. So I highly recommend it if you if it's something you're interested in. A, um, the, the the Marvel United Discord is great because a uh, there's lots of people there, really friendly people. That if you um, go and ask some questions or, or make a little post for your own where you want to put your ideas and stuff like that. Um, there are lots of people there that are willing to help and give ideas and advice and just be sounding boards and, and give support and that sort of thing. So that that's one thing. And because of the support of people like um, Dave and uh, Helios23, uh, like sharing those templates and that sort of thing as well, um, it's quite, you know, it, it's not that onerous to sort of get into it and start um, start using that stuff and start working on it so and Perfect. making it a reality and then and then there are those sites like make um, make playing cards and i think there's a place in in oz that i did i did a bunch uh called eprint um as well um so there are different options there for for printing them out um and so or you can just get them done you know print and play just do the um paper paper copies put them in some sleeves and 
that's a much cheaper sort of way of doing it too. So lots of options. So yeah, buy like a cheap yeah. pack of playing cards if worse comes to worse, and just slip yeah. the paper in between. And yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's you're laughing. That's um, we're the brute force. That's that's what brute force are at the moment. So hey, just, perfect. There you go. Look, I just got uh, lots of those doubles. That I've got like what this. I think this is um, uh. Maybe the Warhammer Forty Thousand card game or something like oh, that. Okay. Played in a while, so, yep. So just yes, yeah, chuck him in a sleeve. And Bob's your uncle, so yep. Wonderful. Very cool. <laughs> so, Sarah, Very where cool. can the good people find you when you're not home brewing? Uh, well, I'm on um, the the. I've got a uh, YouTube channel called the Maple Monkey. Um, it's uh, not very prolific with the the number of videos that I put out, but it's yeah, lot lots of um, lots of. Uh, Marvel United gameplay videos, um, and um, yeah, at the moment it's it's very much uh, lots of Marvel United homebrew <laughs> gameplay videos. Um, but ho I hope to, uh, I'm definitely looking forward to in the next a month or two when uh, Spider Geddon comes out to be sort of diving into yes. some of the content there as well. So that'll be good. I know um, Milk from the uh, uh, Marvel United Discord is big big fan of Spot. So I think I'm going to have to do Spot as my first uh, villain battle. I think there. I think uh, he'll he'll be fun. He sounds pretty fun too. Like the yeah uh, yeah yeah. So that's good. Yeah. So I've got um, I'm on there. I'm also on. Uh, I've got a I've got about um, I think it's about six people in in this <laughs> Meeple Monkey Facebook community group. Um, uh, so I've got, I think it's called like the Meeple Monkey community page or something like that. And, uh, but it's basically just a, a place for people to come and hang out. And, and uh, we sort of share uh, our painted miniatures and, and that sort of thing as well. Nice. So um, that's probably the one thing I regret about homebrew is I've, I've lost the time to paint as much as I was painting. So <laughs> yeah, I've slowed down true. a little bit on that, but uh, yeah, some really friendly folks in there, um, uh, Dan and uh, Jiro and, uh, Len as well. They're they're all um, uh, sharing videos of of uh, not videos, sharing uh, pics of their miniatures as they as they're painting them up and that sort of thing as well. So you can uh, join us there if you like. Um, and yeah, that's that's been much it. Otherwise, just if you're around the uh, streets of Sydney, um, you know, <laughs> say hi. <laughs> <laughs> and that's about it, sort of thing. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. And awesome. I'm I'm currently currently reading. Uh, Oh my Super goodness! Of the stuff, <laughs> it's a very good book. Fantastic read. Thank uh, you. Re yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, the prologue is is fantastic. The way it sort of builds the the suspense and the tension, it's fantastic. Really good. Oh yeah. my gosh, that makes me so happy. Thank you good so one. much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> and you can yeah. find me right here on Digital Charcuterie and also on our sister channel, Rebel Scum Podcast Network. They're not making Star Wars right now because everything's on strike, but that's okay. We're going to talk about Star Wars anyway. Nice. And uh, we, you can also find me on the Andrew Fantasia YouTube channel where I, I do a lot of plugging for this as well. So that all <laughs> hey, that's, happens there. That's the same book. That's what a coincidence. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's all over the world. And uh, James Rizile says, I still need to put it on Cabo. I will. I know. I keep saying I will and I will. I promise. I just keep forgetting. But it's happening. It's going to be on Cabo. <laughs> all right. Awesome. Well, in the meantime, Spider Geddon is hopefully only a couple months away. Um, so, but we're yeah. going to keep making that weight shorter and sweeter here yeah. and on the Meeple Monkeys channel. There's lots of great Marvel United stuff to keep yeah. us occupied until we get that juicy mm -hmm. spider getting in that juicy yeah. season three. I think, but, um, I think they said, sorry to interrupt. I think they said 30th of September, uh, in Oz, I think we've got a few sites here that are listing it like for pre-order. So if, if you're looking for like when it's coming out, I think 30th September has been a date that's popped up on Australian web stores. So. Yeah. I like that better than October. So yeah, <laughs> I'm on board. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching us. Uh, we really appreciate it. We hope you had a good time. And until next time, may you be the masters of your own.